Kindness Collaborative came from a piece of patient flow improvement work that we did about 18 months ago, just going into winter. I'd started in Oldham in the summertime and had grand ideas about doing a patient flow improvement piece of work just before we went into Christmas to try and rally the troops and clear the decks and all those important things before you go into Christmas in a hospital. And it wasn't until we ran the improvement project, which was called the 100% Challenge, uh, which was trying to create the conditions to deliver a 100% performance day in our accident and emergency department. It was a whole hospital piece of work. And it wasn't until we ran the improvement project that it became apparent just how bad a problem incivility was here at the Royal Oldham. The conditions that are present in any hospital in winter are incredibly pressurised, incredibly stressful for the staff working in those areas. And then I, in my infinite wisdom, added a whole host of new stresses and pressures into that by trying to run improvement projects at the same time. And what that brought out was the worst in everybody. You know, these are uh, normal men and women working in extraordinary circumstances a lot of the time. And some of the literature shows that the conditions that need to be created for you to have unkindness or incivility within your organisation are stresses. Well, we can't get away sometimes with having stresses. Not least there are stresses associated with work, uh, staffing pressures, bed pressures, but people bring stresses to work, families, you know, relationships, all that kind of normal stuff. It's not realistic to think you can work stress out of working life. But the other condition that the literature says has to exist is a permissive culture. And that did feel like something that we could pay attention to. How could we improve our culture so that we weren't permitting unkindness? This was about how we use kindness to improve the way that we deliver care to patients. And I'm really drawing those connections between the experiences of our staff and the experiences of our patients. How staff feel in work and how they treat each other how we treat each other manifests in how we treat patients. When you start to look at some of the statistics about what that means for organisations in terms of their effectiveness, it's really quite surprising, I think. So when you're in a situation where somebody's being rude to you, 80% of people will spend time then worrying about that after it's happened. And 50% of people would actually reduce the time they spend in work. So we're robbing each other of time through being unkind to each other. Perhaps more worryingly, and this has been replicated in simulations, 61% of people who experience rudeness or bullying behavior actually experience a decrease in their cognitive ability. So we are not only robbing each other of time, we're making each other more stupid. And that's why I say when, when we present on this is we're robbing each other of time and potential. And in an environment where we're working with patients and in life-saving situations, that just feels like something that we can't afford to do. When thinking about how to improve kindness across the organisation, we went to the method that we know best, really, which is quality improvement methodology. Now, that felt quite unusual uh, and a bit of a step into the unknown because quality improvement methodology typically is used to improve quite a tactical thing. So. Uh, it's used a lot in manufacturing environments to look at end-to-end -end processes. In clinical areas, it's used to think about how we improve our clinical processes. But we were thinking about improving kindness, a big cultural improvement for the organisation. So we use the Institute for Healthcare Improvements Breakthrough Series model. You start a collaborative, so you get together interested parties and you run a series of learning sessions, which is what we did. And that culminated in a summit back in December last year for us, where we shared everything that we'd learned and we shared the improvements that we'd made. Like any good quality improvement project, it started with an aim and we had a driver diagram. So our aim was to improve kindness in the organisation within six months. And we would do that by focusing on three primary drivers. Now those were self, so your own behaviour. So what are you doing yourself that might be helping or hindering a kinder culture? Teams and focusing on what happens within teams, how are we creating kind cultures within teams? And the third area was between teams. So thinking about how teams interact with each other. Because this project started um, just before the pandemic, we were able to leverage it and the, some of the benefits around it effectively for better outcomes of patients. Just to give one very specific example of this, we were having daily uh, briefings, daily planning meetings to discuss our emergency response. 
and the kindness work was embedded into the core of those meetings. And that means that the meetings are, are more productive and they work better. The people in the decision-making roles get the best information to help them to make the right decisions. Something else, particularly in view of the coronavirus pandemic, was the introduction of wobble rooms. And it's been an incredibly difficult time for everybody in recognising the pressure that teams across the organisation have faced. And sometimes just needing five minutes to take a breather, to get a drink and to read a magazine or just gather the thoughts. So we introduced wobble rooms across the organisation and we were overwhelmed with support. Most of the time we deliver care for patients in teams rather than as individuals. So how we work within teams is likely to have a, an effect on patient care. In fact, there's a little bit of data that suggests that highly performing teams is associated with a lower mortality in hospitals. Uh, so developing strong team working is really important. The way we went about doing this or delivering this was to have half-day workshops. We would bring teams in from across the organisation and train them on the differences between uh, what we call pseudo teams and, and real teams. And I experienced this myself as part of the surgical directorate and it was an incredibly interesting experience. Within our divisional team, we did a piece of work around whether we believed we were a real team or a pseudo team. And, and it was difficult at times because it forces you to hold a mirror up against yourself and examine your own behaviours and the impact that you have on your team. Whether your communication with your colleagues is clear and whether their understanding of what you believe your objectives are, are their understanding as well. We've got more work to do to develop our team in terms of really developing trust and psychological safety. But having done the exercise, I feel that we know each other better, we understand each other, and we just continue to work on trust. One of the things that came out of the change package at the end of the, the collaborative was the importance of creating group shared norms. So uh, the way that we did this on the intensive care unit was to create a morning huddle, a daily huddle. We created it for the entire multidisciplinary team. This was absolutely key. So we carefully process mapped out the first part of the day to find the ideal opportunity for the team huddle. We made sure that we had the wider multidisciplinary team all present, including physiotherapists and the other allied health professionals. Uh, this allowed us to create a, a shared understanding of the day ahead where we could plan the day and if everyone would have a, a, a shared mental model of what we were going to try and accomplish during that day on the intensive care unit. The feedback uh, following this process has been wonderful. Uh, members of staff who previously felt completely distant from the intensive care unit, as in they just they would drop in, do their little bit of activity and then go away again, they now felt included within our wider team. So the impact was huge. So the Kindness Collaborative really supported us to do some focused team building activities on one of our areas that was struggling to retain experienced staff members, but also had some challenges with safety. The Collaborative gave us a structure to, to work with to develop some focused team building activities. We also looked at the leaders we recruited into that area. Throughout the collaborative, the importance of leadership was reiterated and leadership behaviours. And we recruited a leader that we knew would absolutely pull the team together. We introduced staff suggestion boxes. We held a listening lunch and that was attended by over 30 members of staff who'd come in on the days off just to come and talk to us about their experience and what they wanted to change. As a result of that, we looked at the skill mix in the area. We increased the number of band seven leaders in the area. The area prior to the collaborative had had about 20 registered nurse vacancies and up to now we're over established by eight registered nurses. So one of the big challenges for us when we set off was how do you measure kindness? We started off with a baseline measure, which was our staff survey results. There were four key questions in the staff survey results from Oldham, which I thought were 
worthy of focus and improvement and those were in the last 12 months have you experienced bullying or harassment from either a colleague or a line manager do you feel that relationships at work are strained and do you feel that you receive the respect that you deserve at work now we baselined all of those questions again at our first learning session at our first learning session we really targeted uh, our invites to senior managers and clinical leaders within the organization Really worryingly, 60% of respondents on the day said that they felt that relationships at work were strained. Even more worryingly, one in four people said that in the last 12 months they'd experienced bullying or harassment from their line manager. Now, those are our most senior leaders within the organisation, so that's the kind of cultural baseline that we're setting for ourselves when our, our senior leaders and senior managers are saying that they've experienced bullying and harassment at work. Now, I'm really happy to say that by the time we came to the summit six months later, we've made significant improvements against all those scores. We were now showing that only 40% of people thought relationships at work were strained. So there's still work to do, undoubtedly, but that's a significant improvement on where we started. And thankfully, uh, fewer than 5% said that they'd experienced bullying or harassment in the last 12 months. Now that's down from 25%, so that's a real achievement. Now those were baseline questions that we took on the day, and when you're measuring for improvement, that's good enough. But actually, we've had all of those results externally validated as well. So running our staff survey again for the next 12 months, we've seen significant improvements against all of those questions again. Part of my, uh, my role is to help the organisation to, to learn from um, either patients dying or when serious events have occurred. I'm very, very interested in the links between that and what we're doing around uh, kindness, civility. Um, we've observed, for example, that sometimes when we report incidents, that can be an environment and a place where incivility thrives. So perhaps the instant reporting system is used in a way that isn't beneficial to learning. Um, so as a future direction for this project, we're very interested in looking at the incident reporting system and how we can develop synergies between organisational learning and civility and kindness. So we're part of an NHS group and one of the things that we are looking at now is how we scale and spread this work that we've started in Oldham across the rest of our group. But not just across the rest of our group, we've also started to link in with other organisations and was really pleased to be asked uh, about nine months ago now to work with a local mental health trust who also started their own civility collaborative inspired by the work that we've done here at Oldham. And recently talking to colleagues at NHS England and Improvement, really looking now about how we can make further links with academic units to further our own knowledge, but also to take some of the research that we've started here at Oldham to see how applicable that is across the wider NHS. Through things like this, this, um, this HSJ award, really thinking about how we can make connections across the NHS with other organisations who want to start a piece of work like this. Thank you.